The main event of this show is uh, building to you defending the NWA title against AJ Styles and uh, Raven in a three-way. And the match ends with Shane Douglas making his TNA debut. He's going to take out Raven, and AJ is going to pin you to win the title after Russo hits you with a guitar. Meltzer's pretty critical. He says, the booking is killing the company, but that's been the case on and off since the inception. The whole show was geared around getting Vince Russo over as the top heel to the point that Glenn Gilberti tried to turn face, but the people shit all over him talking about insider stuff like Judy Bagwell and David Arquette's title reigns in WCW. Russo hit Jarrett with a guitar, so Styles wins the NWA title in 13 minutes and 59 seconds of a three-way involving Raven. Raven was taken out of the match when Shane Douglas debuted and attacked him and threw him out of the building. And Raven was never acknowledged again, even though the match went several more minutes. Russo's idea was for Sabu to be in that role, but Jarrett nixed it, saying Sabu had burned the company three times already, and they didn't want to start a program having to rely on him. Raven and Russo are still trying to get Sabu in. So much for Russo's compliments about all the tragedies in wrestling, putting his money where his mouth is. Jarrett was cut a little from the guitar shot. The crowd popped huge as they badly wanted Jarrett to lose. Even though the idea was for Jarrett to be the face to get that over, Styles had to back down from a challenge for a rematch and Jarrett picked Sting to be his partner for the anniversary show. And instead of putting Styles over at the finish, it was clear the announcers were instructed to put over Russo and Russo was the one celebrating with the belt. Of course, last week in the title match, Russo did the same swerve, interfering to help Jarrett beat Gil Birdie. Lots to unpack here. Do you remember nixing the Sabu return? The Sabu conversation almost, almost from the very, very beginning was, I love him. I love saw Sabu in uh, Vegas when we were out there. Um, but it was stutter starts. And, and I can remember saying, Vince, let's book him, but not, but not book him in the main event. How funny how this is going to roll out. But, um, yeah, I didn't think he fit in this main event on, on this particular show. But Sabu, uh, and there's a good note coming up in this show, kind of after year one, it was kind of a recap. Just all the, it, well, not factions, because that feels like an on-screen deal, but, you know, our up-and-comers, established stars, an ECW flavor, an independent label, uh, independent wrestling label, all that. But Sabu, to the Asylum fans, they absolutely loved him. Let's talk a little bit about AJ. You know, this is supposed to be AJ's big moment. As a reminder, this is the first time he's become the top guy. This is the first time he's won the big belt. This is the first time he's become the NWA heavyweight champion, carrying the 10 pounds of gold. And the story's more about Russo. In hindsight, I wish we'd done this a little better, maybe a little differently for AJ. Let's say you. That's that's a two-edged sword in that AJ, in the first year, you know, there was so many criticism. And, again, it's just a different era because the real-time good and bad out of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and all that instant feedback, but the narrative of we're not establishing new stars and Jeff's pushing himself and – uh, they're using old WWF guys or WC, WCW guys or this or that. The reality is in year one, AJ won every, every major title and he became the world heavyweight champion in Russo for better or worse was his manager. So was it too much Russo or them together as a team was just what Russo needed and AJ needed again, Subject, <laughs> it's, a, it's subjective. I mean, it, it really is. Could we have slanted it maybe a little more toward AJ? Sure, we could have. But that's not the artistic call we made. I just, uh, you know, I, I know that I sound like a super fan here, but I wish for AJ, you know, the focus would have been on he hit his finish on you, and he's the one to end it rather than, you know, here yeah. comes Russo with a, a yeah, weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the decision though, because you said something a little while ago, you said, uh, uh, talking about Glenn, when the fan, when the public votes, and so they're voting with their wallet, they're voting with their eyeballs by not changing the channel, their wallet with, with buying tickets and more importantly, merch, at least in my opinion. 
And, you know, just the, the narrative was, you know, why maybe we don't see disco in that light. I get it, but I'm curious how you stay the course here because your character, the local crowd there in Nashville, that's seeing the show week in week out, man, they hate you, but you're a baby face and you continue down that path, even associating yourself with sting. I don't know anything about this, but I imagine being a wrestler, it's more fun to be a heel, but I also know, I think back to like the dying days of the AWA when everybody's going for greener pastures, Vern made Larry the champ because it's his son-in-law. He's not going anywhere. We can trust him. He's going to stick around. Did you think you needed to be the top baby face because you knew you were going to be here even in uncertain times, or was it a part of a larger plan? So I'm going to take up of, I'm going to take several steps back. A, the first answer to your question is yes. I was under contract. There was others that were under maybe we might've had a few guys under a year deal by this time, not many. So certainly you can count on Jeff. He's not going anywhere. He's an owner, but the assumption that, and I'm not exactly sure if that was Wade or, or Dave, that the fans hate Jarrett, I believe is inaccurate. And I, these guys are still, some of them are still online. The heel faction that was as we walked to the ring right there on the right. So let's say a thousand fans are in the arena. Uh, and let's say 70, 80, I wouldn't go as hundred because the heel faction was really about 30 to 35 guys. So I'm doubling that. But anyway, 50 fans, if 50 fans are booing the crap out of me, in, in a time when the baby face is starting the sell. So they're not on their feet going crazy for a comeback that I, I just think Dave and the people that reported to Dave and the people that were more reported to Wade, Vince, uh, Raven, whatever it may be kind of creating that narrative. Oh, they hated Jarrett in the asylum. I don't ever recall that Conrad. I, I just, I, I don't. And look, that sounds like, oh, he's, you know, whatever defending or making excuses. The reality is I don't buy that at all. Were there some heel fans? Absolutely. Yes. And, and you could almost look at, this is not a comparison, but the, the there is the Cena situation. Would you say there was a time that everybody in the WWE universe hated Cena? Never. I just don't think that's ever existed. Has there been times where it was almost cool to boo Cena? Right. I mean, there, yeah, I, I think so. 